In today's episode, really delighted to welcome our guest. Our guest is Principal Sohad Ettai. Really happy to have you here. Thank you. My pleasure is mine. So, uh, Principal uh, Sohad, when it comes into being a principal and a person in your position, it is a very, very, let's say, pleasurous uh, position, but at the same time, it has a really heavy, uh, let's say, work on your shoulders. Tell us more about it. Uh, being as a principal in the nursery, it's uh, very challenging and because I'm uh, responsible of my, you know, many points and tasks. I have uh, so many tasks to do. Um, I'm responsible of the staff, uh, the kids, um, uh, make, uh, build up the relationship between me and uh, the parents as well, uh, the staff in, in the company. Uh, all these uh, uh, points. Yes. So uh, when it comes into that matter, working as a nursery is something really challenging because you're not only dealing with the parents but also uh, the kids, the critical age, the ones that actually really cries all the times, every time uh, their parents leave them at the uh, doors of the nursery. Tell us more about that experience and of course uh, that routine that happens every morning. Yes, uh, indeed, it's a routine happen uh, in daily basis. Yes, we receive our kids, you know, um, in in the early morning at seven o'clock. They start coming. Uh, some of them, let's say, they crying if they are new to the the place. Yes, uh, new environment, new faces. Uh, they start crying. Let's say it will be like. They will take one week. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, kids they will take more than that, like one month. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they will be familiar with the faces, familiar with the with the, the place. They will like it. Yes. Thank God. Uh, yes. They will, you know, get really attached e to the place. Exactly. Yes. They will get attached. Yes. No. Yes. Um, I had experience with my daughter. I used to take her to the nursery, and she used to always cry every time I leave her and I used to feel really sad about it but then they show me some videos for her after leaving where she laughs she smiles she enjoy her time well I go back to take her from the nursery once she sees me she starts crying again so this is where it made me really so frustrated like is she happy is she not and then I discovered she is having fun but it is her way to show that I will miss you or I missed you. So tell us more about this kind of type of children that you have in the nursery and especially the parents, the one who are really attached and scared. Like for instance, my child was the firstborn. So it's always attached with the firstborn. I mean the second, the third, they'll just leave them. <laughs> but it's always that attachment to the firstborn, yes. You know, the beginning of uh, uh, receiving the kids or uh, applying them in, yes. in the nursery. Uh, I make research or I ask, you know, the parents regarding those kids, uh, like the history in the family, whether he's the eldest, if he's the youngest, he's mm -hmm. pampered, all yes. these issues. So if he's uh, the youngest, of course he's, he, he will be pampered and he, he is very attached to the mother at, yes. at home. Especially the kids, you know, they were born during the the COVID pandemic, COVID yes. nineteen uh, stage, let's say, yes. or period. Yes, they were very attached to the to the parents. Plus, they were they are so you know unfamiliar with the environment and scared from to getting you know uh, engaged in in the in the community. Yes. Uh, so uh, these type of students, uh, the, the kids, of course, they don't know about uh, the, 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 the environment. Yes. It's new. The people, all of this, all of a sudden, they were pulled from the mother and to, into, to another, yes. into the another new uh, environment, environment, which is uh, strange for them. They start crying. Uh, they they will discover after that you know that this environment it's nice it's uh, safe for them the day after day they will used to it um, some kids they you know go more for that they yes. are so smart they are using their weapons uh, as you said yes each day they got like something new 
at the end, when they finish all the weapons, they uh, stop stop crying and mm -hmm. they used to to the to the system and to the routine. Yes, and of course, enjoying their time at the nursery itself with the teacher, with all of their friends and the surrounding and all of the great activities that yes. you actually do in the nursery itself, keeping them always busy with all of these uh, kind of lessons, uh, more of a fun and also easy ongoing um, education system. Now, when it comes into having that all set and plan, we would like to tell the audience more about how important your work, especially that you are not only a managing uh, the whole system but also uh, providing some kind of let's say materials when it comes into uh, specific age uh, specific uh, uh, genders and so on let's say more about uh, our uh, system in the nursery um, we are receiving uh, kids from starting from one year up to five years old um, we work in different curriculums and the programs uh, we have Oxford curriculum, a Montessori program, which uh, enhances the motor uh, skills, the sensory skills, the language skills, and the, the, sens uh, the, the sensory skills, sorry. Yes. We have exclusive uh, uh, Islamic and Arabic program in the nursery. Uh, and. Uh, the, the values uh, Islamic program that we are working on. Yes. Uh, these all programs and curriculums are useful for all ages of, uh, or, or, of the kids. Yes, yes. And that's very important indeed because um, this is where the parents actually start to uh, evaluate each kind of nursery and they do need these kind of uh, curriculums be presented within the early ages because uh, they're like a sponge wherever you feed them they're going to abstract and of course going to uh, product product at the same time into a positive and a friendly way now dealing with uh, children you know that they love to play and in nursery, there is always time for them to play. So in that time, when that time ends for another group to come to the play area, we see children crying. They wanting to, let's say they want more uh, to stay, uh, longing to play in the area. How do you actually deal with them? Um, this is a good question, actually. Uh, being the kid in the nursery, this is very important to, to the kids and the mother as well. It teaches him from the young age to, to be organized and about the time also. We have a schedule and we have lessons, classes. Each period, like it stays for 30 minutes. The kids learn day after day that this period of time, it has a, a start and it, it has a, an end also. So, from time to time, they will learn that from 9 to 9.30, this is a specific time for, for playing. Uh, at the time, the teacher will say the, the time is over, they will line up and they will go back to the class without yes. crying. Yes. So, this is the benefit of uh, uh, putting uh, or applying the, the kids in early uh, ages right. because it's, it's an early uh, learning center mm -hmm. early learning center is uh, learning kids from early ages yes and it's very important to educate them in that certain age because we've seen so many especially the the grandparents uh, you are uh, rushing and putting them early uh, stages uh, nursery because they're still kids let them play let them have fun but in the same time they need to be educated in early ages especially when we're talking about today's generation i mean children are actually using phones in that uh, specific age uh, instead of let's say talking and mumbling the first word they're actually learning how to uh, open let's say some kind of youtube channels or playing a game within that early age therefore 
uh, it is not really early for them to get educated, but it is the right time for them to get educated. Now, when it comes into the nursery, we've seen that uh, some uh, students are uh, smarter than the others. Like uh, you see a student within two years old, but she products words and sentences more than the others around her, surrounding her. So tell us about these kind of, let's say, uh, um, more of a sense of uh, educators. Uh, do you keep them all in the same uh, room or do you have, let's say, more developed uh, rooms for the higher educated ones? In our nursery, we're divided our students regarding their ages. Mm -hmm. You know, I have five groups starting from toddlers uh, we receive from uh, one year to one year, 10 months. Mm -hmm. Then second one is nursery from one year, 11 months to two, uh, four months mm -hmm. uh, or two and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, then pre-K, it's two, six months up to three years and a half. Uh, KG1, three, six months up to four mm -hmm. and a half. Then KG2 or like we call them leaders from four, Four, four years and a half up to five and a half. Yes. So it's divided by the ages. Mm -hmm. And uh, regarding the, the differentiation or in, 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 in the levels. Yes. This is in the classes. We find so many levels, uh, you know, in, yes. in, in, in the, the kids. Class, yes. In our curriculum, we are ensure that to deliver all the, the, uh, the kind of education to suit all type of learning, the stu uh, student learning, uh, and to enhance that we deliver all all the uh, the, uh, the learning uh, to help the differentiation in in, in the uh, in the kids. In the kids it's yes, up. because it's also very important for them to uh, live among uh, the same age group because uh, they won't feel pressured. They won't feel that this uh, person is actually older than me or this child is older than me. Therefore, um, there's this kind of, let's say, unsecured environment where else when they are all associated in the same environment, they will feel really happy. Now, talking about food, I'm very sure that you have very big problem with food, especially when parents yeah. bring the food and uh, telling them not to put chocolate and they refine chocolate. How do you deal with that? Especially that if the uh, student is actually having the chocolate and some of the kids could actually want that kind of sweet. Tell us more about it. For example, the beginning of the year, we give the parents uh, a paper. Uh, we call it like... Um, the needs that yes. they have uh, More to, provide, yes, to provide, yes, to provide the supplies to, mm -hmm. provide, to provide for the kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all the time um, uh, encourage them to provide them with the healthy food. And all the, the parents now in our campus, they know that uh, the campus is peanut free zone. Mm -hmm. They don't provide, you know, peanuts or any type of peanuts with the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, in due case of we have allergy. due to uh, to allergic, yes. you know, issues. Uh, plus, uh, we talk to them all the time about uh, the healthy food. Encourage them to provide them with fruits and vegetables. Chocolates are not allowed. So, if we find, for example, any chocolate, we we pull it from the the kids immediately. Uh, junk food like chips, yes. fizzy drinks, or yes. these types, you know, of 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 food. Also, we pull pulling from the kid, and we talk to him if he's, you know, aware of you yes. know, three years or four years. Yes. But until now, thank God, we few, you know, uh, cases we we, we face. But uh, thank God, all the parents are uh, helpful. Cooperating. Yes. yes cooperate. Uh, co cooperative Cooperate. with us. Yes. Uh, helpful. Uh, they seek all the time the best for their kids yes and in the end uh, this is what all parents want the best for their kids and thank you very much uh, principal Suhad, for your time it was really a pleasure having you here and knowing more about your daily life especially when it comes into students thank pleasure is mine thank you so much and that was our episode dear viewers especially our interview segment hopefully you enjoyed watching